so, so I guess the songs went through a few evolutions. How different are they from what you wrote? Uh, some of them are. Some of them are quite different. Some of them aren't different at all. You know what I mean? Like I would. A lot. Of, some of the songs aren't. I would say the majority of them aren't that different. If you heard me play them a year and a half ago or whatever, it probably wouldn't be a striking difference. But then there were some that took real interpret interpretive leaps. You know, like uh, peace of mind and and some of the stuff that that what happened was I would just basically stop playing guitar. Like a lot of the stuff, what happens is I'm writing it and I'm kind of playing some bass stuff with my thumb and then you know some rhythm stuff with my fingers or whatever. So I'm kind of trying to imagine the full band when I, the way I play guitar. Oh, okay. And then so what happened was once we had the band, I was like, oh, maybe I don't even need to play guitar. And that really freed stuff up. And then Joel would hear it and be like, okay, why don't we try like switching it up this way or that way? So some of them took, some of them changed quite a bit. Others, you know, didn't, I, I would say again, like the structure of the tune, the real meat and potatoes of the tunes didn't change tons, but it was, a, it was about fine-tuning them. Sometimes we like, you know, shorten an instrumental thing or double the chorus. There was always little details. Joel's really uh, great at pointing out small little hooks and details that can make a big difference in a song. But the spirit of the song. The spirit of the song stays the same, you know, the, like the main, the main meat and potatoes, the, the lyrical idea and the melodic idea. So I'm curious, now when you play solo, do you go back to, you know, playing the bass with your thumb? Yeah, a bit. More the way you originally wrote it. Maybe? Yeah, I mean sometimes it's weird because the more you get familiar with how the band sounds, the harder it is to play them solo. Or you know, mm -hmm. some of the songs really exist in a band in a band world. I really wanted these songs to be good enough. I, I kind of had a philosophy on it that I really wanted them to be good enough to exist solo or with the band. I really feel like a really strong song should be able to kind of hold its hold its weight in in, in any kind of format. And I find the best songs on, you know, that I have are ones that do kind of fulfill that. They live, they can exist, me playing solo or with the band. But still, there are some songs like, again, like the Peace of Mind, because of the, the approach that we took on the record, that's an approach that's really band-oriented. I'm not even playing guitar. It's really like kind of, kind of like a slow reggae thing with, you know, big pianos and stuff, so. Right, right. And, yeah, I guess, do you ever break the word, let's say? Out live? Um, sometimes they're hard to travel with. Oh, we're listeners yeah. are brutally, they're, they're really, um, they're great. I got one at home, which was so cool to get and so great to put on the record. But they're really tough. Like uh, Rhodes keyboards are a little bit more, uh, a little bit more versatile. Well, not versatile, but they're a little bit heftier. Right. Wurlitzers, once they break, are actually a little hard to fix and you can't really flip them upside down and they can't get banged around too much on the road. I know people used to, obviously, back in the day, but I try to be careful with mine, so we don't actually have the luxury very often of, of bringing the old whirly around. Okay, well, I mean, personally, I think the songs are definitely strong enough, uh, worth hearing live in any setting. Right on. So, so what is the promotional plan? Just doing shows in Canada? Or? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm actually going back to the UK in the fall to open a few more shows for Jules Holland, which oh, is very, very cool. really cool, and yeah. in Scotland, actually, which I've never been to, and they're great shows. They're three or four theater dates in a row, um, which is, and they're, they're nice, really nice places, so that's going to be cool, and I, I'd imagine I'm going to be getting to the States. I know we've started kind of promoting the record in the States to radio stations. I have a radio yeah. tracker in the States now, which is the first time I've ever had that. And then, okay. you know, playing festivals in the summer. And I play a lot. You know, I, I do try to play a lot of live shows. And I, I spent, you know, all of my winter out west for the Olympics. Yeah, and that was pretty cool. And, and then the summer is actually quite a bit in the Maritimes. I'm back in Ontario a couple of times. I'm back for North by Northeast to Toronto. And so, yeah, it's, it's busy. It's good summer. It's really good. Cool. Well, we'll look out for you. Now, I want to ask you one last question. I'm really curious about this one for you. Since, you know, obviously... You, I'm guessing you have a lot of strong influences from a variety of artists. What are five essential albums for any CD collection? Um, well, I just saw one uh, uh, when I was just walking down Queen Street, which is Ray Charles' Modern Sounds of Country and Western Music. Or that's great. Th yeah. I would say that's definitely in my top five. Um, I would have to say probably a Bob Marley record would have to be on there. Maybe, um, I would probably say Natty Dread or Kaya might be in, in there for me. And then uh, Randy Newman, Sail Away. 
that would have to be there, Randy Newman, I think, just because it's, it's such a diverse record. The, the, the songwriting on it is so diverse and so great. I just associate him with Disney movies. Oh, yeah. Nowadays, yeah. Oh, he's an incredible songwriter. Yeah. He's just Very unreal, true. and that Sail Away record is so... It has the most heartbreaking songs, and then the next song will be a hilarious song. I, there's a lot of depth in that, in that record alone. Um, what else? Well, Chet Baker is kind of... The, he's one of the guys who got me into singing and in the first place. There's, I mean, really, as a collection, the best of Chet Baker sings is like one of the best crooner records okay. of all time. Um, and and what else would be an essential, an essential record? I've been really into. You know what's a great record? Actually, speaking of a, a newer record, is is uh, is the last Ali Farka Touré record before he made before he died. Ali Farka Touré and Tumani Diabadi, two Malian musicians. Okay. And Ali Farka Touré just died last year, and that is an incredibly beautiful. Beautiful record. I would, yeah, th those are just five that came off the top of my head, but they're all they're good. Yeah, they're real good. Solid. <laughs> Finish. Great. Thanks, David. Thank you so much. For oh, right on. Great thank to talk you. To you. Thank you.